Prototyping IoT projects has never been easier thanks to the particle photon and its use of an online IDE and the Arduino styled language. Eventually, however, you may need to make an application that responds to hardware events immediately. In this how to article, we will learn how to use interrupts on the particle photon. Most microcontroller programs have an infinite loop where all the main code is held and constantly executed. While this main loop of code can be used to read inputs and data sources to react to changes, it can only do so when a specific comparison instruction is executed. For example, if a main loop of code checks the status of some buttons connected to the I.O. but also sends data to an HTTP server, then when the microcontroller sends data, any button presses will not be serviced and ignored. This is where interrupts come in. Interrupts are special functions that are called as soon as an event occurs. When an interrupt is launched, the execution of the main loop code is haunted. A microcontroller will have sources that can trigger an interrupt service routine, and on the particle photon, interrupts can come from many different sources. Some of these sources are shared and so can only be enabled if another source is disabled. The interrupt sources in the particle photon are shown below. Creating an interrupt requires two functions, the attach interrupt function and an interrupt service routine. The attached interrupt function takes three parameters, the interrupt source, the interrupt service routine function, and the interrupt mode. The interrupt service routine is nothing more than a simple user-defined function to handle the interrupt, which could include a value being incremented, a message sent over the UART, or even a system restart. Three possible interrupt modes exist for interrupts on the particle photon, change, rising, and falling. Change is a mode that fires the interrupt whenever a change from the interrupt source is detected. Rising is a mode that only fires the interrupt when the interrupt source value rises, and falling is a mode that fires the interrupt when the interrupt source value falls. Shown is an example of a simple interrupt service routine that fires whenever a button press is detected on D2. Sometimes, an interrupt may need to be disabled or deleted, and this is done with the detach interrupt function. It takes a single parameter, the source of an interrupt, to detach. Once called, the photon will no longer call the interrupt service routine defined in the attach interrupt function. In some time-critical scenarios, an interrupt can cause problems if the system being halted detects an interrupt, and so disabling interrupts can be useful. This is done with the function noInterrupts which prevents the photon from firing any interrupt. When needed, the interrupts can be re-enabled with the function interrupts. Interrupts have priority over normal code found in the main loop, but when another interrupt is detected while an interrupt is being serviced, interrupt priority comes in. Any interrupt whose priority is greater than another interrupt will halt the one with a lower priority. For example, if D2 and D3 are both configured as interrupts, but the priority of D2 is greater than D3, then an interrupt caused by D2 will halt routine service for D3 and the photon will execute the interrupt service routine for D2. When the D2 routine is finished, the interrupt routine for D3 is then resumed and when completed, the main code will resume. Priority can be set using the attach interrupt function and is a fourth optional parameter. The priority number ranges from 0 to 13, with the lowest number being the greater priority. 